Yo, what's good guys? Chewy here. With a 100 cap, we are going back to good old health farming. This is a process many of us veterans have taken for granted because it is something we've been doing for such a long time. But I know tons of new players are joining the game, so I thought now would be a great time to make a guide on health farming. So what is health? Hells is a mode we have nicknamed from Hell Mode. It is a mode where you run a dungeon and spawn unique monsters, which you then kill for a chance to drop very powerful gear. With 100 cap, Hell Mode has been changed to the dungeon Guides of Wisdom, specifically for 100 cap. Why run Hells, you may ask? The main drawing point of Hells is to farm epics, muffins, evens, shines, whatever terminology floats your boat. Epics are hand down the best items in the game currently. If you want to make a character disgustingly overpowered, Hells is where you want to farm. Any mains worth their salt will eventually try to farm out some epics, especially if you want to tackle most up and coming end game content such as raids, harder dungeons or whatever Neopot decides to throw at us in the future. We are getting Soroka raid really soon, by really soon I mean in probably like 3 to 4 months so this is the main prep for that. Side note, currently you could farm legendary gear that is similar to power to 95 best in slot prey gear. Basically with level 100 legendaries you can complete most if not all current endgame content. Panda war, prey raid, fiend war, farm storm and lane, the list goes on. Not every single character needs to be pimped out in epics but I would recommend at least legendaries. You can farm the full legendary set in around 2 weeks. I'm finishing up most of mines currently and I've been doing it for about one week. I need to lay some ground rules, just so we're all on the same page. You need a few things in order to start running hills. First you need to at least level up to level 96 in order to farm Guides of Wisdom aka the new hell mode. Leveling is fairly simple and easy in this game, once you have gone through it once or twice you will easily get the hang of it. You follow your scenario quest basically all the way up to level 100. Another side note, this game is built off of having multiple characters. If you see a class that looks cool, play it. I think you start off with a crazy amount of character slots, something like 21. Play multiple characters. One of the, one of the main gripes of this game is the FP system. There is an easy workaround, play multiple characters. Second, you need time stones. You need 18 time stones to run one Guides of Wisdom, 16 if you're a VIP member. You can hit up the cash shop if you want to learn more about the VIP. I highly recommend if you can afford it, that and Neo Premium, but it'll cost you a pretty penny. You could get time stones from running level 100 content. Most dungeons drop them. If you want a soul time stone farming dungeon though, I'd recommend Stormy Root. You will at least need a full legendary set to run it efficiently though. Events currently are giving out time stones like crazy. Take advantage of it. I'm pretty sure with Guides of Wisdom being the new hell farm, most future events will at least give out some time stones. So if your current events are giving out time stones, please abuse that fact. Demon invites an epic soul conversion. If you have any leftover demon invites from your previous cap, you can convert them at Grandpa into Ballistica. It is the area to the right of the training center. This is possibly the main way of getting time stones and sustaining them is by converting epic souls at Grandpa. You can exchange one epic soul for 20 time stones. That is one hell run and some change. It is recommended to try to funnel most of your time stones onto a few mains until they are fully decked out. Also, another way of getting some easy time stones is the level to max level. You will be mailed a 250 time stone box once you reach level 100. Third and final thing you need to run Hells is fatigue points. Hells is fairly costly. It spends 8 FP per run and you run through them pretty quickly. I personally recommend for mains to focus on Guides of Wisdom. The main limiting factor to progression in this game isn't really the time stone themselves but the FP it costs to run the dungeons. Try to have your mains run hell mode as much as possible. Also in 100 cap there are two new dungeons that are basically free hell modes. Black Shrine and Basement of Pain. 
You can run each two times a day. They are fairly difficult. You will at least need prey slash legendary gear to tackle these dungeons. It is best to run them in a party. Most players are following the naming convention of 2 plus 2 for party play. And they should be part of your daily rotations for most characters that can handle them. They are free hell modes. Take advantage of that. Now that we have the rules in place, let's start and prep for hell mode. The best practice is to stockpile your time stones to run hells. As mentioned before, possibly the best method for doing that is epic soul conversion. Some ways you could get epic soul in this game is to 1. Disassemble unwanted epics. 2. Run raids. You can get a max of 40 epic souls a week, which is 800 time stones. Most veterans set up a handful of mains they run raids to get these weekly epic souls. I suggest you do the same. For the easiest time, I'd recommend you make a male crusader, female crusader, and an enchantress. Every single party late game needs a buff class and those are the three buff classes in this game. Every single end game account should have all three of them. Pick a few other classes and you are golden. 3. Run Hells Sometimes you get epic souls from running hells itself. You can and should be running hells every time you get some time stone on any characters. Other than epic souls, the main other way is to farm stormy root. I plan on making a stormy root guide later on so hold tight for that. I'm setting up my account right now to run them pretty efficiently but for some bullet point advice, pick a good farmer classes. Wind Mage, Impaler, Asura, Savior are just some to list off. Get your chosen class full legendary sets. It takes about two weeks to farm that. Practice your skill rotation throughout the dungeon. And finally, run Stormy Root every day. As quickly as possible, aim for less than one hour per FP bar. Congratulations! You have now graduated Chewy Goon's Hell Crash Course. Now time to put your knowledge to action, run some hells, and run them efficiently. Pick a difficulty you can comfortably handle in a timely manner. The drop rate of epics do not go up with difficulty. Only the materials that drop at the end go up with difficulty. I personally am still running normal on my mains due to experts just taking too long for my liking. I get a normal done in about 10 seconds while an expert takes a few minutes. The more you can roll that RNG dice, the faster you are likely to get your epics. Run them efficiently. So guides of wisdom consist of four rooms. The spawn room. Use this room to buff and prime your characters for the rest of the dungeon. The second and third room are fairly easy with a few mobs. Find a rotation that fits your character. Usually most class have at least two huge AoE skills. Use them in these two rooms. The final room, the altar. The altar has three main waves. First, a few mobs. Second, a mini boss. Third, the final boss. You can potentially spawn all three waves very quickly due to the next one spawning immediately after the previous wave. Most second awakenings in this game has a huge hitbox that lingers for a few seconds. This is when you use that skill. For example, my necromancer's second awakening hits the altar, spawns the waves, and lasts long enough to kill and go through all three waves, finally killing the boss and opening the altar. Most classes have a skill like this, use that skill in this room. Basically use a long lingering skill on the altar. Oh and a quick tip, you do not need to pick up items from the previous rooms. When you do slash slash set items, all items from the dungeon will appear underneath you. This dungeon is like one long extended room allowing you to do this. You can set up a keyboard shortcut for slash slash set item in your hockey settings under, under chat. This tip is just going to help you speed up your hell runs. The more dice rolls you could get off and less time the better. Okay, to summarize how to farm hells efficiently. Number one, get to level 96. Number two, stockpile time stones. Number three, use an efficient skill rotations for the different room. Number four, blast the altar with a long lingering skill. Number five, use slash slash set item at the end to pick up all the loot. And number six, hit retry until all your FP is gone. There's no hidden tricks to gearing your character late game. 
it all comes down to RNG, but you can farm efficiently to help increase that RNG. It's just about rolling that dice as many times as you can. Sometimes you're going to enter dry spells, sometimes you're going to pig the fuck out. Either way, good luck out there. The new hell mode is super fun. The sound effects are satisfying and oh my god, seeing that altar glow golden, it just hits different. My name is Chewy Goon. I am a DFL content creator. I stream over at twitch.tv slash Goon every day starting at 3 p.m. EST. If you guys enjoyed this video, please drop by, like, and subscribe. I'm planning to do this for the long haul. I'm trying to make waves in this community. Anyway, love you guys. Stay safe out there. I'll see you around. No. Oh, dude, who is the pig? Oh, it's a rainbow. What the fuck? <laughs> Who is it? Oh, it's my first fucking... No way, from a hell party? Alright, that's a pig. What is that? It's earrings. Hold up. It's earrings.